Hi there, my name is Caleb Carlson and I'm reading for Ken. This is why it's so important to me to create a place, a place the viewer can contemplate the paintings over time and let them move. They need the viewer. They're not like representational pictures, like traditional landscapes or portraits. Tell me why. Because they change. They move, they pulse. Representational pictures are unchanging. They don't require the active participation of the viewer. In the Louvre, in the middle of the night, the Mona Lisa is still smiling, but do these pictures still pulse when they're alone? That's why you keep the light so low. Is it? To help the illusion. Like a magician, like a play. To keep it mysterious, to let the pictures pulsate. Turn on bright lights and the stage effect is ruined. Suddenly you're just left with a blank stage with a bunch of fake walls. What do you see? My eyes are adjusting. Just white. What does white make you think of? Bones, skeletons, charnel house, anemia, cruelty. Really? It's like an operating theater now. What? How does white make you feel? Frightened. Why? Doesn't matter. Why? It's like the snow outside. Outside the room where my parents died. It was winter. I remember the snow outside the window, just white. And, and these pictures in this light, they're flat, vulgar. The light hurts them. Do you know where I live? What? Do you know where I live? In, in the city? N no. Uptown, downtown, Brooklyn? No. Do you know if I'm married? What? Do you know if I'm married? Dating, queer, anything? No, why should Two I? years! I've been working here. Eight hours a day, five days a week, and you know nothing about me. You ever once asked me to dinner? Maybe come to your house? What is... You know I'm a painter, right? I suppose. No, answer the question. You know I'm a painter, don't you? Yes. You ever once asked to look at my work? Why should I? Why should you? You're an employee. This is about me. Everything is about me. You don't like that, leave. Is, is this what it's about? Like, baby feels wounded, daddy didn't pat him on the head, mommy didn't hug you today? Stop it. Don't blame me, I didn't kill them. Stop it. Go find a psychiatrist and quit whining to me. Your neediness bores me. Bores you? Bores you? Christ almighty, try working for you for a living. I mean, I mean the talking, talking, talking. Jesus Christ, will he ever shut up? Titanic self-absorption of the man. I mean, you, you stand there trying to look so deep when you're nothing but a solipsistic bully with your grandiose self-importance and your lectures and your arias and your let's look at the fucking canvas for a few weeks. Let's not fucking paint, let's just look. Oh, oh, and, and the pretension, Jesus Christ, the pretension, I mean, I can't imagine another painter in the history of art ever tried so hard to be significant. I mean, not everything has to be so goddamn important all the time. Not, not every painting has to rip out your guts and expose your soul. Not everyone wants art that actually hurts. So sometimes you just want a still life or landscape or soup can or comic book which you might learn if you ever left your hermetically sealed submarine with all the windows closed and no natural light because natural light isn't good enough for you. Oh, but, but then, then, you know, nothing is good enough for you. Not even the people who buy your paintings. Museums are, are nothing but mausoleums. Galleries are run by pimps and swindlers and art collectors are nothing but shallow social climbers. So it begs the question, who is good enough to own your art? Or maybe the real question is, who's good enough to even see your art? Is it just possible 
no one is worthy to look at your paintings? That's it, isn't it? We have all been weighed in the balance and have been found wanting. You say you spend your life searching for real human beings, people that can look at your pictures with compassion. But in your heart, you no longer believe those people exist. So you lose faith. So you lose hope. So black swallows red. Thank you.